Is Max Verstappen as good as Kyle Larson? Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. So this past week, Jennifer Fryer from the AP kind of ignited a social media firestorm when she said that Kyle Larson has entered the conversation with Max Verstappen as the world's greatest driver. Now, I think it should be reversed. Is Max Verstappen as good as Kyle Larson? And before all of the uncultured, small brain, beans on toast eating Europeans come at me in the comments, pay attention for a second. When you look at their racing resumes overall, Kyle Larson is a much more diverse, much more well-rounded race car driver than Max Verstappen is. Is Max a great Formula One driver? Yes. Is he in great equipment? Yes. Has he raced anything outside of an open wheel car? No. And that right there is the problem. Kyle Larson is a better all-around race car driver than Max Verstappen. And when you look at their numbers, Kyle Larson's resume, like I said, is massively more impressive. Yes, does Max have great numbers? Sure, 59 Formula One career victories, three, probably likely four Formula One World Championships, 10 Formula Three uh, wins, a third place finish in his Formula Three Championship, and that's about it. And some people will point out that he has wins in iRacing, and listen, when I win an ARCA race on iRacing, everybody's like, well, that's because it's a video game. You're able to do that. When Max wins an endurance race, it's because he's a great driver. And that right there tells me you've never run an ARCA race in open lobby on iRacing before because it's much more treacherous than doing an endurance race. Surviving 40 laps at Texas is way harder than surviving 24 hours at the Nürburgring. It just absolutely is. And if you don't believe me, try it sometime. And once you get out in front, you're just dodging cars left and right like they're Danny Cafiet and he's locked on to you. Kind of like Connor Mozak on an oval for the NASCAR guys. You just hope that you don't get hit by him this time. And then you can go on and hopefully win the race. Conserve your tires though. That's the key to winning an ARCA race. So when you look at Max's numbers, yeah, they're fine, but they're not anything that's spectacular outside, outside of Formula One. Like I said, great Formula One driver. It's also in great equipment, but we're not going to touch that topic right now. He's a great Formula One driver, great open wheel driver. But when you look at Kyle Larson's resume, it's vastly more impressive. 25 NASCAR Cup Series wins, four on road courses. Those are uh, circuits where you turn both left and right, which seems to be a foreign concept to the Europeans who think that Americans only know how to turn left. He also has 15 NASCAR Xfinity Series victories, two on road courses. Again, the type of tracks that you turn left and right on. He has three NASCAR Truck Series victories. And then you look at his resume outside of NASCAR, it's more impressive than Max's resume alone as well. When you look at it, he's a 2015 Rolex 24 at Daytona overall winner. All right, again, turning left and right there in a different style car at that. He's a two-time Knoxville Nationals winner in a sprint car. He's won the Kings Royal. He's won the Chili Bowl two times. He went and hopped in a dirt late model. And in his first attempt at that, maybe it was the second year, he goes out there and wins the Prairie Dirt Classic. He also won the Hillbilly 100, two of the biggest races on the dirt late model schedule. Now he's qualified fifth for his first Indianapolis 500 in a car that he's never been in before. His past weekend was more impressive than what Max has done in terms of diversity in his entire career up to this point. He hopped out of an Indy car after qualifying fifth in his first Indianapolis 500 and then flies to North Wilkesboro that night for the NASCAR Cup Series All-Star Race, starts last, finishes fourth on a new surface that he had never seen right until the race time. And when he got out on track, that was the first time he had ever, you know, driven a car on the surface and he still manages to finish fourth. His schedule starting on Sunday through next Friday is, again, more impressive than anything Max has done, at least more diverse than anything Max has done. He's racing the Indy 500, the Coke 600, so he's going from IndyCar to NASCAR, and then on Friday night, he'll be racing a sprint car at Lawrenceburg. And again, he's a contender to win in all three of those races. I'm not saying Max is a bad race car driver. I think people get lost in that. But Max is certainly held on this pedestal because people have been trained to think that Formula One truly is the pinnacle of motorsports. Formula One is not the pinnacle of motorsports. Formula One is the pinnacle of technology and development in motorsports, absolutely. But when it comes to driver talent, it's not the pinnacle of motorsports. When you look at it, there's a ton of mid-Formula One drivers. Con contrary to what the people on Twitter say, where you know, there's no such thing as a mid-F1 driver, there's absolutely tons of mid-F1 drivers. You have good drivers, great drivers in Formula 1. Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso. Those guys are really, really talented, have tons of just natural ability. But when you look at Lewis and Max, for example, they've never raced outside of Formula 1, outside of open wheel cars. It's hard to judge if they're truly that great of a race car driver. Now, Max is a great open wheel driver, right? He continually just absolutely knocks Sergio Perez into the dirt week after week, and it's not even a competition at this point. 
he's just so much better than him. And if they truly are equal machines, then yeah, Max is absolutely far and away the best driver on his team. But if you put another driver, say a Fernando Alonso, a Lewis Hamilton, Charles Leclerc, probably not. He'd just end up wrecking and tossing it away. But you get the gist. If you put them into that Red Bull, they're likely recreating most of what Max has done. But when you look at a guy like Fernando Alonso, his resume is, again, much more rounded than what Max's is. And it's more impressive. His career is. And I would argue he's probably a better driver because of that, even though he's almost not twice, but 20 years almost older than what Max is. I mean, when you look at it, Fernando's a two-time Formula One world champion, won a bunch of races in Formula One, went over and won the Rolex 24 at Daytona, won the 24 hours of Le Mans with Toyota, went on to win the World Endurance Championship. He went to Dakar and raced off-road. The guy continually tries to push his limits. He went to Indianapolis, ran really well on his first attempt, not so well in the second two attempts where McLaren just really couldn't figure out the difference between standard and metric. At the end of the day, his resume is more diverse and more well-rounded and probably makes him a better race car driver than what Max is right now. And that's not to say that Max can't eventually be a really well-rounded race car driver. But up to this point, he hasn't pushed his boundaries outside of open wheel racing. And I'm still convinced that most Formula One drivers don't want to race anything outside of Formula One because if they do bad and they get embarrassed, then that sort of knocks down the facade that Formula One drivers are the greatest drivers in the world. Great drivers, that doesn't make them the greatest drivers in the world by any means. Kyle Larson, like I said, from a natural driving ability, likely more talented than Max Verstappen. But until Max goes out there and tries to prove it, we'll never see that. And listen, I understand Max doesn't want to race ovals. Completely understand that, especially in IndyCar. Um, they're, they're scary. And if you didn't grow up on it, it makes a lot of sense. And I don't think there's anything wrong in admitting that you're scared and you don't want to do that. I would much rather a driver say that than go out there and attempt it and have something bad happen. That doesn't prove your point or anything. doesn't make you seem stronger, more like a man, more masculine. None of that. Don't. Make the right decision for you, what you're comfortable with. Totally fine with that. But when you look at what Kyle Larson's been able to do over his career, like I said, more well-rounded, more diverse schedule. I mean, the NASCAR Cup Series schedule alone is more diverse than anything Max Verstappen has ever done. So until Max goes out there and races something outside of Formula One, at this point, he's just a great Formula One driver. He's not a great overall driver. Again, nothing wrong with that, but it just kind of is what it is. One person in the TikTok comment said, here's what it is. Max is the greatest driver in the world. Kyle Larson's the greatest driver in America. Which, that doesn't really make sense because America is, in fact, part of the world. I double-checked with Wikipedia. They said, you are correct, Matt. And I said, okay, thank you for that. But, so, does that mean when Max comes and races in America, like a couple weeks ago in Miami, does that mean that he's the second-best driver because Kyle Larson's in this country? What kind of, what's the standoff ground here? Is there, like, some sort of reciprocity for handing this off? I'm just curious on it. At the end of the day, it's a really dumb argument to make, right? Because they don't really race anything comparable. Kyle Larson is specialized in a few different categories at this point. Max is specialized in one category. If you put Kyle Larson into a Formula 1 car right now, Max is going to wax him. If you put Max Verstappen into a NASCAR stock car, Kyle Larson's going to wax him. Like, it just is what it is at this point. So it's a dumb argument, but when you look at it from a racing resume standpoint, Kyle Larson's racing resume and how diverse it is, is far and away better than what Max's is. So let me know in the comments what you think about this. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.